What's good, Skate Athletics fam? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to review my top five hip flexor exercises for skateboarders. And of course, we're going to discuss how implementing these exercises into your workout programs is going to improve your skateboarding. Before we get started, let's look at the role your hip flexors play in your skating. First off, hip flexion is simply when the angle between your femur and your trunk is decreased, aka bringing your knee towards your chest. Hip flexion happens every time you push, ollie, kick flip, heel flip, basically everything you do on a skateboard involves hip flexion. Obviously your hip flexors. Now there are quite a lot of muscles that contribute to hip flexion, but the five key contributors are the iliacus, the psoas, the pectineus, the rectus femoris, and the sartorius. During your skate sessions, your hip flexors will play a variety of different roles. They'll act to stabilize your pelvis, they'll help you balance, they'll propel you around the park, they'll bring the board up to your feet. As we said, literally, they're always going to be used. Now, there's no scientific data out there that actually shows improving your hip flexor strength is going to improve your skateboarding. However, a big limitation of that, as we discussed before on this channel, is that there's not a lot of research in skateboarding in general, and the literature does show that improving your hip flexor strength can improve various performance parameters such as sprint speed, agility, and muscular endurance. Improvements in these areas will directly translate to stronger pushes, more stability on your board, and to longer sessions where you'll be able to skate harder and more efficiently than before. And not to mention, having strong hip flexors can potentially decrease the likelihood of sustaining knee pain, back pain, or a significant injury. So yeah, it's a good idea to strengthen up your hip flexors. All right. Let's get to the exercises. Starting with number five on the list, we have cable hip flexion raises. Set your cable pin at the lowest position. Strap your ankle in tight, then move a couple feet away from the machine. Before you start the movement, place a little more weight on your support leg as you drive your knee up towards your chest. Pause for a quick second at the top of the rep and control your leg back down to the standing position. Tap your foot on the ground and be sure to stabilize your pelvis by engaging your glute. Then repeat. Perform three to four sets with 12 to 25 reps on each leg with a 60 second rest in between sets. I'm a big fan of this exercise for a variety of different reasons. Cable hip flexion raises are great for building muscular endurance and strength. They take your muscle through a very large and sport specific range of motion, as well as challenging your core and your ability to balance. Additionally, they allow for a good amount of potential progressive overload so we can actually get our hip flexion stronger over time. When performing this exercise, I want you to focus on that larger rep range. The hip flexors are relatively small muscles, so training with heavy loads is not going to be as effective as focusing on the lighter load with a larger rep range. Slowly decrease the number of reps you're performing as you're progressively increasing that weight over time. And boom, that's how you can ensure you're making progress. Moving on to number four on the list, we have the Bulgarian split squat jump with knee drive. Now, let me tell you, this is a pretty advanced exercise. So if you're not already comfortable with Bulgarian split squats and single leg plyometric exercises, please consider using this later on in your training program once you've already built some strength, strength endurance, and have gotten used to some plyometric exercises. Start by setting up a box behind you. For this exercise, I'd recommend a pretty low box, something around 10 to 15 centimeters in height. One quick stability tip, ensure your feet are hip width apart, not directly behind one another. This wider base will ensure your stability. Control the descent of your split squat then explode out of that bottom position, driving your knee as high as possible. When you make the jump, make sure you're still using correct mechanics, such as tripod foot, making sure your knee stays wide and externally rotated, making sure your core stays braced, etc. Also ensure you have most of your weight centered on that front leg. A common mistake I see during split squats and this exercise is the individual having just too much weight on that rear leg. To get the most out of this exercise, focus on driving the ground away with that front foot, and lastly, land softly, absorb the force, reset your stance, and then repeat. As you can tell, this exercise is a power exercise, and it will be most effective if we use the max velocity parameters. And that means the load we use needs to be pretty low, specifically between 10 and 40% of your split squat one rep max. The reason the load is gonna be pretty low is because the whole idea of this exercise is you're gonna be moving through that range of motion as fast and as explosively as possible. We're trying to foster that fast twitch adaptation which of course will translate to quicker, higher, and more powerful skate tricks. And in order to actually do that, the load needs to remain light. Perform about three to five sets with three to five reps on each side, and it's vital that you take about a two to three minute rest in between each set. After that rest period, I need your body feeling recovered so you can complete each rep at 100% effort, and once again, moving as fast and as explosively as possible throughout the whole range of motion. 
Power exercises are all about producing as much force as possible, and any fatigue will diminish that ability. To progress this exercise over time, of course, you can increase the load within that 10 to 40% 1RM. However, when you're getting started, I want you to focus on that muscle-mind connection, the speed of the movement, and how high you actually jump. A quick snappy ollie is one of the most important aspects of skating, so that makes getting off of the ground as fast as possible in this exercise very key. All right, now moving on to number three on the list, we have the straight leg bridge with hip flexion. Start by getting into this elevated straight leg bridge position with a mini band around the arches of your feet. Brace your core, squeeze your glutes, then bring one knee towards your chest into hip flexion. Hold that contraction for two seconds, then slowly return your heel back to the bench. Repeat this on the same side for 12 to 15 reps. Take a quick break, then repeat on the other side. If you want an extra challenge, skip the rest in between. Just be aware of one thing. This exercise is a hip flexor exercise that also challenges your core. I want quality hip flexion reps, so if you can't maintain that slow tempo throughout the entire duration of the set because your core's given out, please take a break, then continue with more quality hip flexion reps. Now, if this elevated version is a bit too much or hurts your lower back or something, give this a try. Perform the glute bridge march from the floor. Perform three to four sets of this exercise with 12 to 15 reps and give yourself about a 60 second rest in between. Now, admittedly, this exercise is not the best for progressive overload because you only can really increase the tension on the band. However, I'm hoping the core challenge on this exercise keeps you engaged for the long term. Personally, I've done this exercise for quite some time now and I still haven't outgrown it. It's still extremely challenging, but if it starts to get too easy, feel free to add reps, go for extra time, or just increase that band tension. Moving on to number two on the list, we have the dumbbell hip flexion raise. This exercise is a great way to load your hip flexors through a large range of motion. The only difficulty with this exercise is the setup. Attach a dumbbell to the bottom of your foot using a thick resistance band, a mini band, or any contraption you can come up with. Here's a quick mini band attachment demo. The reason why I chose to highlight this option is because mini bands are awesome for skaters and you'll get a ton of use out of them at an affordable price. All right guys, for this setup, we've seen one thick mini band and the dumbbell. I'd recommend get the thickest resistance on the mini band as you can possibly get, because that's gonna keep the dumbbell attached to your foot. So start by throwing your foot just on top of the dumbbell, and we're gonna stick the mini band in the heel of your shoe, just like so, to get a little anchor point. We're gonna reach under, grabbing the band, pulling it under, this part might be kinda tight because the band's tight, and then we're just locking it on the ball slash top of your foot, kinda like where your laces are. From here, keep your ankle tight, and that dumbbell is going to stay attached. Once you're all set up, choose a moderate load to begin this exercise and start by performing 12 to 15 reps on each side. Elevate your non-working foot so the dumbbell is just above the ground. Then flex your hip, bringing your knee up towards your chest, keeping your knee roughly at that 90 degree angle. Return your leg to the starting position with control, then repeat. The further we drive that weight away from our body, the more stress we're going to put on our hip flexors. One of the main reasons why I like this exercise is the potential for progressive overload. Generally, this exercise allows you to load up your hip flexors a little more than the others because we're using dumbbells. The only limiting factor is really your setup. If you find yourself working up to higher loads, just keep one thing in mind. Once again, it's always about quality reps. Please be patient when progressing the load on this one. You may even find yourself using 10s or even 5s at the start, and that's okay. Just trust me, put in the work, and you're going to love how you feel on the board. All right, and saving the best for last, my favorite hip flexor exercise, the banded hip flexion isometric hold. I'm a huge fan of this exercise because it's ridiculously challenging, minimizes soreness, and builds muscular endurance. As we discussed, your hip flexors are not the strongest muscles in the body, so towards the end of a long skate session, these guys are gassed out and other larger muscles of the body will then begin to overcompensate for their lack of output. And as I'm sure you are thinking right now, yes, this is exactly where overuse injuries start to begin. Start this exercise in a standing position with the mini band wrapped around the arches of your feet. Feel free to hold on to something for balance, then brace your core, lock your shoulders back, stand tall, and drive your knee up to 90 degrees at the hip, knee, and ankle. As time passes by, I don't want you thinking, just hold the position. I want you actively driving your knee up towards your chest the entire time. The goal of this exercise is to build strength and endurance. The longer you hold, the better. To set a realistic goal, let's shoot for 45 seconds. Of course, your first time trying this, that might sound insane, but we're going to build up to it. Begin with 3-4 to four sets, holding for about 15, and if you can get to 45, great. Give yourself about a 30-60 to 60 second rest in between, and we'll progress this exercise by increasing the tension on the band or the time you're just holding that contraction. This exercise is pretty simple, it doesn't take a lot of coordination, 
So really, I just want you focused on driving that knee up as hard as you can the entire time. Without a doubt, the hip flexors are one of the most used and most important muscles to strengthen for skateboarders. I hope this video highlights some exercises that you may not have seen before or reinforces what you're already doing in the gym. I know I say this type of thing quite a lot, but trust me, the more powerful and the stronger we get your hip flexors, you're just gonna be feeling so much better on the board. Last quick thing before we get out of here, if you like this video, please go ahead and do me a favor and hit that like button down below and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, fam, I'll catch you next time on Skate Athletics. How close are we? Very close. <laughs>